into our summer platform to share. Um, I always say I'm not going to up very much, but I'll just up in the first five seconds. So, right. Uh, today we are, these are, if you've not been to one of our events before, I'm John from Breakable Charity. Uh, anyone with one of these lovely t-shirts on is probably also from Breakable Charity. We do these sessions once, twice a year. We also have the conference, <coughs> conference. The idea is that we share some information with you, something that might help you in your business, might change what you do. Uh, we're just trying to be helpful. Um, we're here for you, so if you want to talk to us. Today, I'm just going to go through a couple of updates. I'm going to talk about security too much, which you'll be happy with. I'm going to demo some features in the Teams and talk a little bit about Teams version 2. Then Sam is going to do her first demo for us, that's not on the video, um, on Microsoft Loop. And Dean is going to talk about some Microsoft Edge features. He's great. He's going to talk about strong authentication. <laughs> and then once we're done, we'll get some golf clubs and we'll go have a guess the driving range or you know, see how that goes. Um, so yeah, first of all, just some things we've been doing. We don't shout about what we do enough, so we just want to kind of share with you about what we do that people don't often see. So in the last year we've started doing, we've done, we have run through a list of things that may or may not be interesting. We have started doing external vulnerability testing, so we're half, it's like a, a small penetration test on the outside of all our clients' networks to see if we can get in, to see if there's any vulnerabilities. Uh, we then go around and start to fix the vulnerabilities. Uh, they do pop up from time to time, so you might have a piece of software that uh, is out of date and that needs to be fixed and this software will tell us so we start to include that in our contracts. Where we've seen, we have a lot of security alerts, I won't talk about security alerts, I promise. We, uh, so we use a software so like a phone system, we went looking, there was a really big uh, problem with that recently so we went to start looking for that in our client systems, we know who had them, we went and fixed all the software, removed it and we've done all of that. We've, we, I say we, Sam has expanded our knowledge up on our website, which you can see So as you can see, we have a knowledge hub on our website. Uh, a lot of people I don't think necessarily know about this, there's so much information on here that Sam has mostly created those articles, there's help notes, there's videos on how to use things. So Sam's done a video on how to use Google already, but his video today is going to be better. Uh, please have a look at it, uh, but that's expanding all the time. It's a really great resource. Um, we've updated 1,700 workstations in the last few months, the latest version of Windows 10, and that's no, no new feat. Microsoft haven't made that process easy for us. But the next thing on Windows 10 is also that it expires on yeah, October 2025, so if you haven't started moving to Windows 11 yet, you need to start thinking about that now. Uh, Windows Server 2012, we're now monitoring this, that goes end of life in October this year. So we're going to have some problems with some people who haven't upgraded their old servers. So Windows Server 2012 is now 11, uh, 11 years old, uh, so that's going out of date. We start monitoring local admin accounts on our client systems. So anyone, any machine that gets a local admin, we automatically contact them and remove it. Even when I said this demo on the laptop yesterday, and he contacted me and said, have you set up a local admin account? I said, you know, I We have started automatically deploying a lot of software. Uh, we have been doing some of this before, but we now automatically deploy so much more software, uh, client software, antivirus software, security software. We've been doing a lot of work on that. Uh, and some other scripting and things like that. We have been also, in, we, we bought some software called Lion Guard, which now monitors uh, additional security in Microsoft 365 tenants. So if there's any elevated privilege, we, we just want people to look for, for in terms of security for people getting into a system, things like that, they, that alerts us that also, also automatically documents our systems. So your systems will be documented in our system, automatically by this software. So in theory, we've got a lot more information. Um, there's lots more that goes on anyway. So um, in the last year, we've also hired some new people. A year ago, just over a year ago, we hired two new trainees, Leaf and Jess. They now progress through the business. They are now junior engineers. They've been great. Uh, in, we also took on a student IT level placement, which is a bit like an A-level. Uh, he joined us one day a week, and we've hired him now as a trainee. We're looking to take on more T-level students uh, later on in the year. Um, we're really pleased. It works really well. People get to learn IT, and we get, we get a bit of help. Um, Ashley joined us last September, October. So Ashley's our service delivery manager. Please talk to him. Uh, if you'd like to, if you can fix problems, that'd be good. No pressure there. Uh, Toby joined us three weeks ago. He's our Power Platform Engineer. So anything, um, any 
power apps, uh, apps related to Teams, um, for expenses, holidays, anything. Toby can do it. Uh, anything. Anything. <laughs> yeah, he's not said no yet, which is good. <laughs> Um, and also, we've had a lot more people qualify recently. We've had some CompTIA qualifications. We've had some more MS 100s, 101s, 102s, and D pretty much completed Microsoft. So, <laughs> good luck. Um, I shouldn't be allowed in technology, should I? There we go. Okay, so here's our agenda, here's the demos, and then we're going to pop onto the drive range afterwards. And Right, so first of all, I'm now, like, next, I'm now just going to do a little bit of demo on Microsoft Teams. So you'll have to bear with me on this. Uh, for those of you in large organizations, this might be more helpful to. Um, if, you, if you don't know someone in your organization, you want to find out who they might be, you can go to what's called the Who app. Uh, so in here, you can see I've already typed it, but you can type Who in your Teams bar, and it will, just, it will launch an application. This is what it's going to work. And you can either ask some questions in here, we go to your organization and you can see who is in your organization who reports to who. Great. It's because of my demo user, which isn't there. So I'm going to do the other way and I'm going to type forward slash who. Um, who is forward and left. And I think that should come back and tell me. There you go. What's all that permission? It's too bad. We move on. There you go. It'll come back. There's a bit of AI in there. It'll come back and tell you. I found these people. So Jordan's got two accounts and an open account. You can select one and it'll tell you who Jordan is, what her job title is, you can see who she works with. Um, the one that, so there you go. There's everyone in the business who works with. You can find out from this who people managers are, what their phone numbers are. You can call them straight from here. So once you found them, uh, you can, if I was, if I could message, I could email, I could video call, or just call Jordan. If I to. So that could be. Uh, save a lot of time in the house of communication internally. Um, this is going to be. Is that already been rolled out? Is it standard? Is it yeah, that's standard. It's been there for a while. I just don't know about it. So, yeah, just type in who. Um, once you've got an app on here, so it will appear as an app on the left hand side. If you right click and pin that, that will always stay on the left hand side of your team tab, which is really quite handy. So if you're on team, you come straight to here. Stupid question. If you were to message someone via this, they didn't have their Teams application running. Yeah. Would it still work? If they've got notifications turned on on Teams, yeah. 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 Because this, this is still Teams. If they've got the Teams notifications on their mobile, it will do it on their, or on their desktop. Um, yeah, you can call internally on Teams. It's a message or video call. Yeah. So, a new feature we found in here is the Manage Teams internally so on left hand side once you're on the teams you can click on manage three dots there manage teams here it'll tell you what teams you're in which is really nice it'll tell you your membership if you're an owner or anything if you're a manager you can go in and change your membership or ownership i think you can archive from here as well if you if you are a manager you can add members we can add to channels and stuff so it just needs to wait sometimes it's hard if you go in here and you remember 30 or 40 teams and some are hidden some are not it's really hard to go through that list for everyone on that laptop, you'd see it's horrific. Um, but yeah, just coming into here quickly, just to have a nice quick view of your teams is really good. It also shows you pending invites, so if you want to see, um, if you if you you ask to join any teams, it'll tell you the status of that as well. If you have multiple teams, that is. In Teams, so quite often here's some Teams messages that we created earlier. Um, I think they're empty. Sorry. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want, always want to see the message. If you want to see what's in here, you do want to see that someone sent you a gift, which is nice. Uh, you can turn this off, so sometimes you don't want to see that someone's the actual content of the message. You can change this to a compact view, so you can click on the three dots in Teams. You can go into Settings, and you can select Compact rather than Comfy, which is a nice way of doing it. And all of a sudden, any kind of content of the message won't be displayed on the left-hand side, which is really handy if you like me and you save inappropriate things. Okay. Um, a new feature in Teams in a meeting, we're not going to demo, demo this today because it will definitely go wrong, is that if you're in a meeting, someone's raised their hand, uh, their hand will stay up until they lower it or someone manually goes and lowers it. What Teams will do, it will, it will work out where someone has actually spoken and asked their question and it will do this. It will automatically lower their hand for them, which if you've got, if you do a lot of the raising hands and stuff in meetings, it's really handy to have that. Um, 
there's a missed callback feature which I think is going to be really handy. So, if you miss, so if you miss a call in Teams, um, it will notify you that you've done it, but now you can automatically call back straight from the notification. It's not done. It. This might work. Okay, so Jordan's going to miss call me. She's run out of credit. There you go. So <laughs> click on negativity. I can see that Jordan's cool. This is really silly, but this call button wasn't there before. You'd have to click into this, and you'd have to go over to here, and you'd have to go and find Jordan, and you'd have to click it. But now I can just call the so I can just call Jordan straight back. There you go. Now we were going to demo this part on this part of the call, but we won't. We just I've got a video of this. So um, if you're having a day and you're at a meeting and you don't want people to see you, you can create yourself an avatar. This is. Jordan's avatar. There you go. <laughs> and you can see on the left hand side or the right hand side of the screen, you've got different um, emotions and different actions that you can do. Uh, so there was my avatar there. So you can, you can, you know, it will, if you talk, it will move the lips and it will move your head and it will do lots of silly things. Jordan's really annoyed with me because I made this a two minute video. So I don't <laughs> actually have enough to talk about for two minutes. So <laughs> kind of move on in a second. You can go to the settings, you can go to more. Uh, you can then go to avatars and backgrounds and you can just create your own avatar. That's not a feature in Teams. This is all Teams 1. This is all current versions of Teams. Now we'll move on to Teams version 2. So Teams 2, I don't know if anyone's heard about Teams 2. It's the new version. Uh, they are, it's in public preview now, so if you've got that turned on, on Microsoft Tenant, you can access it. Um, but you possibly haven't. There goes me changing the settings finally. They realised that obviously Teams is really um, memory and it's quite intense, memory uh, intensive, um, and causes a lot, a lot of problems. So, they've, they've developed the app completely, which is crazy considering the app was only really about four or five years before they redeveloped it. Um, it'll, look, it'll install three times faster, it will launch two times faster, you can join meetings two times faster. Um, you can it'll consume 50% less memory, and I think that's the big thing because a lot of people will have a lot of slow machines because Teams is chewing up memory. So, does Edge, but Teams chews it a lot. Um, and it will consume less disk space as well. So, we're well, looking forward to that. There we go. Oh, there's my other avatar too. Um, so, right, what, what we'll do is we'll flick over to the new version of the team. So, if you've got it in public preview, oh, it should be live. Um, the thing we found out this morning, it should be going live in September. And it looks like they might force everybody to move to the version of the team, the new version of the teams, um, which kind of makes sense. Um, so, if you've already got it, you can try the new teams here. You can click this button. It will close and then it will reopen. Hopefully, as done every other time. Okay. And so you go, new version of the team, so it's slightly slicker, they've made it. Um, more white, you've still got your chats down here. They have released some, uh, a couple of extra really good features. So, <coughs> I think one of the key things is fine, if you're accessing files in Teams, a lot of people go, what? Well, that's really hard to do. They've really upgraded um, this. So, you can click on files and you can go and see what files you've got access to in Teams. And this is across all the Teams, all the SharePoint, and all the OneDrive run with just the team you have access to. So, this is your home, it'll show you your recent files. I've only accessed one, which is this. You can break it down into Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF, which is also a really handy feature. This is just your recent files. You can then go and see My Files, which is your, essentially your OneDrive folder, which sits on 365, which will hopefully be synced with your machine. <coughs> OneDrive will sync your desktop and documents items to OneDrive on the cloud, so you can access it from anywhere. So it's data from your laptop. I think this is a really this is really helpful here. I think they've introduced the Teams One now as well, but you've got you can see documents that have been shared with you. They're documents that someone's messaged you on Teams. Some of the shared with you via OneDrive or through SharePoint. Anyway, you can see everything that's been shared with you. But you can also see what you've shared, which I haven't actually got any in here, but you can see what you've shared to other people. So you can actually go and realize, oh, I've just shared that spreadsheet with someone, I need to stop that. And you've got more information there. This will work for, I think, some emails as well. So it's really handy of working out when someone sends you a link for a shared file. You think, oh, God, where, where's my shared link? This is where you'll find it. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much me. They're on Teams, Teams version two, um, they've literally added in the apps here. Um, 
So these are our custom apps that we do since our desk booking app. This was available in Team version one until three days ago, which is quite nice. I mean, we can actually start using it because we have a lot of these kind of internal apps in Teams, which is what I think does a bit of the thing. But, uh, they won't let me because I'm on site, I'm not in the assignment. Um, so that's going to be a really happy feature. So have you built those into your Teams yourself? So these are power apps, yeah. Uh, and you can you can create the light, you can create icons, and you can you can force a policy um, in the port in the admin portal so that they appear in Teams back there. So you can force them onto people if you want to make sure they have the apps. And if, is well, sorry, Karen, maybe, okay. does everyone have to have an individual license, or can you have a company license for like our business has with 15, 20 <coughs> Does everyone need an individual license? To as long as you've got a free supply of license, you can have power apps. You just need them customized. Yeah. Um, uh, once they're customized, you can then access them. You've got loads of other apps in here that you have. Um, uh, it's another shift app. We might not show it here, but there's, um, yeah, you've got loads of other third party apps that you can install and you can use and develop. We can also buy them remote so you can create your own application. That's chip. Okay. So, right, next up is going to be Sam. So, I'm going to disconnect and Sam. I'm going to let Sam come up and present. Sam has um, been promoting Luke internally for quite a while, and she's finally made us listen. And we actually really like it. Um, what's my answer? So Sam's just going to share the screen. So Luke is um, kind of one of the next big things that were in uh, Microsoft 365. Alex, and carry on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm going to demo uh, Luke. So this is Luke. Um, it was first announced back in 2021, and there's kind of been smaller versions of it in Teams, which are called components. So um, they were just like uh, like checklists that people could kind of work on together, or like uh, paragraphs of text and things. And then back in March, they put the full Luke app into public preview. Uh, it's still in public preview. They haven't said when it will be fully available, um, but if you do want to access it now, I think it's a cloud policy, if you told me correctly, um, which you have to enable, or I'm sure Dean will help you if you want it. Um, but it's a really nice app, and I really love it. And it, as John said, it did take me a while to convince people. Um, but essentially, for me, it's like a really nice version of mixing Word. Um, Excel, like OneNote, everything based on <coughs> one place. So it's kind of based around uh, project management. So, for example, these are all kind of projects that I've been putting into Loop over the last month and a half. I've been using it, um, and these are called workspaces. So you can have a workspace uh, project. I'm going to use the Event Planning workspace. So within every workspace, you can have multiple pages. Um, you can also have sub pages. And you can have endless subpages for your subpages that could literally go on as organized as you would like to be. Um, just like, so when you create a new workspace, you can give it like a header, as you probably saw, um, an emoji, yeah. like a title. So each workspace can have its own individual customization, as you like. Um, so this one, I obviously put some golf themed stuff, but for like the planning one, I put like some sticky notes, they're very, I just like all the visual elements of it. Um, and then within each page you have your content. So um, these are actually called components. So there's uh, different text, you can add tables and checklists. You can even um, like write task lists, assign them to people in your organization, um, set deadlines. And then this all um, also works with planner and to do and teams. So if you have task lists in planner, this will all connect to that, you'll get reminders for it, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, this here is some of the um, components that you can use. So to add a component, you literally just, oh, not like that. You type the forward slash, and it'll come up with a list of different options. So there's like headings, there's uh, tables and checklists, um, and there's also some templates that you can use. So I've kind of put some of these here already so I don't have to go through and show you more. So those are obviously the various headings. There are tables that you can put in and these are all customizable so obviously you can add more columns and rows, you can expand them bigger and you can also add uh, content within tables. So here you can add, as I said earlier, like the checklists, um, 
date ranges, um, anything else that you want to add. Um, they also have like these nice dividers, so you can divide up content. And then these are some of the templates. So there's a task list template, a voting table template, and a progress tracker template. Um, and again, these are all customizable. So if you didn't want a cons list, you could get rid of that. Um, people can come in here and just vote up for things. It's just a really like simple way to basically add nice visual content. Um, you can also uh, move content really easily. So if you uh, go to piece of content here, there's a little drop at the side, and you can literally just pick that up and move that around. So it's just a lot easier than uh, doing this in Word. Um, and you can also react to content. So if you're in someone else's uh, page or workspace, you can click on this little comment icon. You can leave a comment for them. Um, you can also react to things and then they've also recently added these little um, like spotlights so you can add little celebrations or little cards <coughs> um, or even like a little torch if you want to highlight something there. Um, new page templates. So obviously when you come in to create a new page it will be uh, completely blank so this sub uh, this sub page is completely blank and they will give you some templates that you can use. Um, so there's like project creation, uh, project planning, like that, yeah, they give you such a range of options that you can obviously use this for. Um, and then if you wanted to use one, you can just type, like click on it, and clear all the content from it, and it will just give you a blank sheet to work with. Um, but again, these are all customizable, so if you don't like something in there, um, you can get rid of it. You create your own templates for other people to use? So Not at the moment. No. Um, but obviously, it is still in public preview. And to be honest, like, yeah, I've only been using it a month and a half, and they've added so much since I started using it. I think the video I did a few weeks ago, even since then, I was like, oh, they haven't got this, and now they have. So they've kind of shown me a bit of it. But it, yeah, it's coming on really quick, but again, they haven't said when it will be publicly available. Um, the other thing I really like in here is this ideas section. So the point of ideas is that if you had a workspace that multiple people are working on, um, you can go to ideas, say like someone's asked you to create a page for that workspace, you can go to ideas, you can um, create a whole page as you like, it's all, again, the same elements, and then when it's done, um, Kind of like ready to go, you can literally just add it to the workspace so you don't have to worry about you know people like watching you do your work, you can just do it in there and then it will be added as a page there, which is really really cool. Um, yeah, um, quick question uh, what happens if let's say a team member by accident deletes something? Should yeah, there is a um, version history here at the okay. moment, so you can restore all this content. Um, so yeah, so like for me, I think it's a lot easier than trying to do any of this in any other platform. You can't do this in OneNote, you can't very easily do this in Word. Like it's so easy to just type the slash and add the content you want. Um, for example, with events planning, like I used to do budgets in Excel, I do task lists in Teams, I do content in Word, I literally just do it all here. Um, but the great part about it is obviously the sharing part. So up here there's a share button and then there are various options. So if, again, if you want to share an entire workspace, give access to all the pages, you can do that. It will just create a link. Um, you can also just do individual pages so if you want to share single pages, then you can just do single pages. Um, and then my favorite, oh, also if you do share, like you can allow people just to view things or they can fully edit it, it's up to you. Um, my favorite thing in any way is the loop component. So basically what you can do is you can either share the whole page as a loop component, and I will show what that means, <laughs> or you can share individual pieces. So what I've been doing recently is within my loops, I've been like, creating a piece of text or tables and I've gone like well I want to share this with John to get his approval but I don't want to actually you know share the whole page so you can highlight pieces and create a loop component and it will highlight it like this 
and then you just have to copy this and then you can go to Outlook or you can go to Teams and it paste it in and it will paste it like this and then when I send it to John or whoever they can open email or the Teams message they don't have to go into the loop they literally can just edit it in Outlook or you know add a task vote or just reply to me and say yeah this is free I think you can even uh, like add comments straight from Outlook or Teams you can react to it whatever you want so it's like a really easy way to just put all your ideas in one place share the pieces that you need and then yeah so but yeah and then the last thing just to quickly show you is that obviously um, I haven't got anyone on this workspace at the moment um, but when you do you can see who's on the workspace up here um, you can also see them they'll be their little face will jump around here as well and if for example John had this open in an Outlook email or in Teams you could also see where exactly they were working in real time too um, oh yeah just the last thing to note as well is that the next big thing I think for Loop is Copilot which is Microsoft's AI assistant so it's fine I feel like they're probably wait to build that in they have got a little bit of AI um, work here which is like when you create new workspaces they'll suggest certain documents based on the title you give it um, but Copilot is hopefully the next thing which I feel like they're waiting for to then launch properly but that is me. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, now I'm having a team. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, right, Dean, over to Dean to talk about Microsoft Edge. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so my demo is going to be on Microsoft Edge, and I've got uh, four main four points. Uh, so you can be interested. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is basically signing into your browser. So what you can actually do if your organization uses Microsoft 365 uh, and Edge, you can sign into the browser with your organization account and turn on what is known as uh, sync. If you do this, you then actually, your favorites, your history, your open tabs, all that kind of information is actually then saved to your Microsoft account. So in that dreaded event where you get a new laptop, no, where's my favorites going, where's my history, I'll basically you sign into the browser and it comes up, uh, which is the, that's the main benefit for users, for, let's talk about security I guess a little bit actually, is for, for organizations, uh, so Chrome's still the most widely used browser, you can do the same with Chrome, you can actually sign into it, um, and some people might sign in with a work email address, but that's still a Google account, and some people might, might not actually even use a work, like a work email, they might just sign in with their personal account. And if they say passwords, or they say favorites and stuff into that, that's now outside of your control, and it's in that person, you know, it's in that person's other account, and that's something for you to think of, and you know, you need to then, can't control it. Whereas if you have it all in your organization account, that's all, it's all within your remit, and you can set policies. This is the disadvantage of extending your screen. <laughs> well, uh, you can also the um, the great th uh, the great thing actually as well is you if your machine is I, I call it cloud managed, um, but you can set up policies in for Edge where you can actually make that signing automatic and turn that sync on automatically as well. And if it's power managed, you can do that without the user even having to see it, it just happens automatically. And the next thing I wanted to talk about is Edge apps. So more and more we find ourselves working in systems that are just browser-based, so not just a website. Um, so we just have lots and lots of tabs and different things. And what you can do in Edge is make what is meant as a edge app. Um, I'll do an example of the break to the hub. If I now 
Sorry, fuck talking quiet. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. I'll talk to it if it's. That's so what this does. It's now I've now got a new window. It's still a browser window, but it's got that look and feel of an old app where we have it. So down in the bottom corner, I've got a new icon. I can pin it to my taskbar start menu, you know, create that desktop and even have it launch. So it's just that nice way to feel that you're still using an app even though it's a browser. Okay. Um, so so is that Chrome, Chrome does it as well. Essentially Chrome Edge. Edge is based on Chrome. So a lot of these things are Chrome as well. That's a What do you recommend? <laughs> what do you recommend Edge? Because it's Microsoft or well it mainly for that first book point is yeah. the organization account. Yeah. There's no problem using Chrome, but... Does it make a Gmail account? Then? Yeah, it makes a Gmail account, essentially. So, so I used to use Chrome when yeah. it's got lessons to me, so I just the main reason you did it was for that login. Yeah, so I have a Gmail account just for Chrome, and I couldn't use it for anything else. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what I'm to use it. Exactly. But it's now, it is the same browser, so it's not as memory intensive, or what well, is still memory intensive. They've done bits on that to try and limit it, but it's just... It's kind of like that separation of gig and work stuff. You get that nice. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing to say about these Edge apps, though, is it works if your if the website you're using doesn't open new tabs. If, if it opens a lot of new tabs, those new tabs go into it go into a browser window. So that's when I wouldn't recommend those in an Edge app. But if you've got applications that will stay in that one. So it's a great way to feel it's separate, basically, from the browser. So the next thing is Edge Workspaces. Now this is a new feature that's just recently come out. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a button if not, I'll just make it small. <laughs> so, Edge Workspaces, uh, like I say, is a new demo and it is essentially it's a workspace for where you can invite people to. So, rather than having to say you're onboarding someone onto a project, Rather than having to send them an email with lots and lots of links going here and that, you can invite them to the workspace. And in the workspace, you can then have basically all the open tabs. You can have favorites as well and tabs. It's also great for like Sam, um, for if you're going to be researching like the next event or a venue and you're working with a bunch of te with a team, you can say invite them to a workspace basically have tabs for all of those different places. Um, it's also live as well. So if someone is inside of it, there you are. So you're not done, but you can make new tabs. So you straight away. Um, it's not great for obviously if you're because it's if you're typing. Um, so if you're like in a system and then you're typing you can't you know, see exactly what they're typing, but you know, it's great for those like things that are important people. You can, and for the demos, it's also, it's because it's its own space, it gets its own history. So maybe if you want to separate out your workloads uh, so you can look for history easier, um, it can be beneficial for that. For prerequisites, um, there is a specific edge version, but I'll just say, Edge browser needs to be up to date as it should be anyway. Um, and you can only invite people inside of your organization, you can't share externally. Um, to create new ones is nice and simple, it is just create a new workspace, give it a color, and then just record it. Create a new one. Uh, 
And then if I wanted to add someone to it, or share it, I'm going to get a link, copy the link and give it to the person. So if you had a document, maybe not one document, you could leave the link in there, basically. And that's, that's pretty much everything on white spaces. Uh, the final thing I really wanted to talk about was, if I can find my mouse again, is, is the, so if like me, one day, got this strange sidebar, wondered what it was, and thought it was just for favorites and then hit it automatically. I would not blame you at all. Thanks to this event, <laughs> I've actually looked into this a little bit more and what it actually is. Um, and I'm just going to take you through basically just a couple of things down the side. So this is the Bing sidebar and the first option is the chat. Now this is Bing chat and it is powered by chat GPT. Um, and it's essentially using chat GPT in a little browser window. What I'll say is that you have to sign in with a personal Microsoft account. You can't sign in with your organization account into it to get the full use. Uh, so if you're just using it there without signing in, you only get three, I'll say three replies without having to sign in. If you sign in, you then get uh, 30 replies per conversation and unlimited conversations. Um, but because you have to sign in with a personal Microsoft account, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. It's a choice. The next part is Compose. Now, Compose um, is generates basically text or content for you. So if I wanted to say, to <coughs> loop demo. I could then pick my tone, my paragraph. Um, I'll, I'll talk about there's a different idea for the paragraph as well, and for the format, I'll show it in a minute. And then short, medium, and long. That's a really good message. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Be able to do it without signing in. So, would you still get the three uses without signing in as well? Yeah, you should do. Yeah. That is the compose part is what I because it didn't require me having to sign in. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that's what it considers to be short as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, mm. <laughs> that's long for me. But it has, um, I found that it can be used as well. So I actually asked it about um, giving me some ideas. On your proposal, for a, Yeah, for a, big, for a big chat, basically. Uh, give me some ideas to. 
and to demo being a chat. And then ideas, uh, and then that's, I've left it on funny, but if I changed it to professional, and then give you a list of basically stuck, basically, yeah, stuck. And we'll give you some ideas basically on how to do it. The add to site, so if you're signed into Word Online, or if you've got a text base where you can add it to, you can actually just hit that little add to site and it will automatically put it in there. But the other option is you can just copy it and move it across. I'm not going to talk about insights. Um, it looks to be like just a news feed where it looks at what you've been looking at and stuff. So it's just the same one as the great bill that what I wanted to do was um, show you is the outlook. So you also get tools, there's different things, but the one I wanted to show you was outlook. So if you're, again, we're all living in browsers now. You wanted to send a quick email to yourself. You can click the little outlet button and then just type, type it to yourself. Hello. So you've not had to leave the browser. Just out of interest, because you know we're going on to the new world, well, while we are going on to iManage, which obviously integrates their money with the Outlook 365. Yep. Will this functionality still be there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it essentially makes a little window inside of your browser. So if you've got like a really long monitor, actually, like this, it kind of makes sense. You can have it just to then pop it out, send you a little message, and then put it back in. That is my demo. Thank you, Good one being on the, uh, on the app, the publish app thing. If you yep. create it for yourself, <coughs> could, could one, could the system admin uh, create one and roll it out to all the users? No, exactly not. It's basically the user doing it. Yeah, so you could give instructions. Um, there's great documentation basically on how uh, easy you have to do it and stuff. Um, but it's that how to, you know, how do people work? Someone might not want to make it as an app, yeah. they might like this, lots of different windows. Yeah. I've made my uh, cloud phone system now, yeah. so it's just got a bit of L6 on the top well, so it's just the easiest place for someone to go and really go and do it. Yeah, our ticket management system, that means so, in our knowledge base. Um, could you use, in the workspaces, could you drive Luke into one as well, places? Yeah. So you could have, yes. you would share the, the whole workspace, you could have on Excel or whatever, and then Luke as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Any more questions? Alright, thank you Dean. Uh, thanks Dean, thanks to Sam for presenting. Thanks.